Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chris Lukaup and in this video I want to introduce you to one of my favorite fish at the moment. It's a pencil fish and from the genus Nanostomus. We still don't have a species name for it, that's why we call it still after the location where it was found, Amaya, from Rio Amaya, that's in Peru and it's from the drainage of Rio Marañón. So the first time that I have seen this fish was in like 2021. I was really blown away and I said one day I will go for this fish, I will keep it. The first uh, fish that have been exported from Peru, they went to Asia because also the price was super high and in Europe probably nobody wanted to pay it. So they went to Asia, but I know, for example, from Oliver Lucanos, a friend of mine, uh, he's in Canada, it's a German guy living in Canada, um, he told me that he has seen this fish already in like 10 years ago but then back then it came just in very very small numbers and they probably stopped why because the place where they come from Rio Amaya is a very remote place it's hard to access difficult to get there so that's why probably they stopped importing them and now they are available in bigger numbers and yes, they are available in bigger numbers now, but still the prices are high. This is like a comment of people that have seen them in the trade already. They say, yeah, I would love to have them, but they are too expensive. In Germany, I have seen them for like from 15, 20 euros up to 40 euros. In the US, probably a little bit higher. But this, like I said, this depends on the country where you buy them, if, you, if the wholesalers have access to them. I know um, like Aquarium Glazer in Germany imports them and there's Reinemanns in Holland. So about the color, I think that for a nano fish, there is not that many species that are like, that they, they don't have like, especially if they are like wild catch or wild caught, they, you don't see too many fish that have this beautiful red color. Of course you have like uh, platys and uh, maybe some betas that are, that have a beautiful color, but usually they are bred fish, like over generations, but not from the wild. And this is what fascinates me. So it is from the genus Nanostomus, and we have in this genus of pencil fish like 19 described species and two or three undescribed ones, as far as I know. I had pencil fish before, I think they're fascinating. So in, in this case, you know that I always want to present you pictures of the habitat or videos. In this case, it's really difficult. I have seen one picture of the habitat and it shows brownish, humic, full with humic acids, water. So it's brown, nearly red. And that's probably also why they have this color. And on the ground, you see a lot. On the bottom, you see a lot of big round rocks. And uh, water is kind of fast flowing. Of course, there are pools that are more quiet but usually a lot of oxygen here humic acids and the water was not that deep when i looked at the habitat picture but this is more or less the habitat i hope you can imagine it and yes i kept nanostomus pencil fish before like this guy nanostomus morton tallery they get a little bit bigger and they're also a little bit more aggressive so not exact for a nano aquarium than nanostomus back 40 kept them as well and these guys, Nanostomus SPE, I have never kept, kept them, but I've seen them in a couple of aquascapes. So it seemed that people who like aquascaping or plants more than fish, uh, or like aquascaping more than the fish is just uh, an addition to the aquarium. Like Amano said, the fish are like the birds in the forest. So some people just add them to have some fish. And yes, they have an interesting pattern. But for me, the color is missing somehow. I have kept these guys, Nanostomus marginatus as well, and also Nanostomus rubrocaudatus, but still I think the new species that I have here are more fascinating than all the other ones, except Morton Tallery. And this is a habitat in Colombia. I have been in Colombia to film Caño Cristales, and I think I have not presented this place on my channel yet, but I will. And here also I found some nanostomus. 
I'm not sure what species it is, but um, it was pretty, pretty amazing this place, mind blowing. So I hope I can show you this place in one of my next videos. And also in the same time, a new, other new pencil fish appeared on the scene or in the hobby. This one, Nanostomus senepa. They, have, they don't have a species name for it yet, because probably it's also a new species. In my view, it gets a little bit bigger than the Amayas, but must have a similar habitat. But I think the coloration, of course, it's very similar, but also mind-blowing. They have this broad black stripe on top and a little bit of different red. So what can be said about the behavior about these guys? How they behave in an aquarium? Well, I think that they do pretty good with shrimp. With uh, large shrimp, not a problem at all. With smaller shrimp, also not a problem. But with baby shrimp, this could be a problem. They are hunters. I mean, I have seen in this tank, I also have Hyalella Azteca. They are known as scuds. It's a shrimp like crustacean, an amphipod. So that is easy to culture for live food and uh, other fish also eat it. But in my aquarium, I didn't want to have them. They went there accidentally. I brought them in with some leaves with, uh, for the shrimp because I always feed leaves to the shrimp and they have been there. So I was not that happy because I know also if the fish, they spawn and they have babies, they lay eggs, the scuds, they could eat the eggs. So I was not happy, but these guys, I saw them attacking them and eating them and that's why here the photo I was lucky to take a photo so with baby shrimp probably not a good deal because they're hunters and if you see them they always stand like um, vertical and they attack the, the whatever little thing there is like worms or uh, amphipods like I said baby shrimp all the little stuff the myofauna but the biggest issue is, in my view, is, is their females. I mean, I talked to Oliver Lucanos about it and he has a great channel, it's called Below Water, where you also could see a video about these guys that is already a year up there. And he also shows a habitat video on pictures. So, and he told me, I asked him, have you ever seen um, the males behaving different, the, the females behaving in a way? And he told me when the males, they uh, court, then they courted always to um, fish that have like a yellow stripe on the head. So he believes that that's the difference between males and females. They both are very red and they both look similar. Maybe the females are a little bit uh, more compact, a bit bigger from, from the belly. But in the end of the day, that is what he said me, to me. It's like they have this yellowish stripe on the top of the head and this could be the difference but i'm not sure about that i also have to watch them and see what is happening but also have seen in the trade there have been females in aquariums that where they sold these fish but they looked more like marginatus females and i know that this is also an issue because some of the wholesalers because they don't want that we reproduce them too fast because to keep the price high they add females of other species from the genus to the to these groups and to sell them in the market and hopefully they will not reproduce i have seen there is somebody that reproduced them but i'm not sure if they are the females of this species so this happens i know that these things happen because i know a lot of wholesalers exporters uh, of fish and importers and I don't like this procedure, but I know it's there. I think it's pretty unfair to the customer. But okay, these things happen. So when I got them, there was no trouble with health, like health issues. They have been, in the first two days, they have been a little bit shy, but then they became very trusting. So now I feed them and they immediately come to, even I can feed them from my hand. So they're, they're not shy at all. And there was also no problem with the transition from the place like they're wild caught, obviously. And um, there is a pH from like probably 6.5, 6.3. So, and also this water with a lot of humic acids. But there was not a problem with the transition. Like other fish that I had, for example, the Sundaidanio, they also come from a habitat that has a very low pH. 
and very low bacteria and they usually have a lot of pro problems with that uh, with the transition from these humic acids water or this brownish water to the normal clear water my ph is also not too high but um, yeah i have like more the soft water no hard water these fish need softer water so no high gh but here was not a problem at all it seems that they are very robust fish and food wise it was also not a problem i could even feed them the the soft and crunchy from chris and olives have you seen this food this is a food that Oliver Knott and me put out on the market. Oliver is a friend of mine and we do this together. So I feed them with this soft and crunchy and they love it. But I also feed them live food at least twice a week because they are hunters. They need some live food. So I feed them blood worms. I feed them tubifex and they are doing pretty well. So when I photographed and presented them, of course, a lot of people love them and they would like to have them. But also there have been people that told me, what is the, is, could there be a problem if they're overfished and could they go extinct? And in my view, it's, it's a good question, but I think that no. Why? Because from where the fish come, they are like exported from Iquitos, Peru. And we have, for example, the habitat of Nanostomus marginatus and also of Mortentaleri that are much more closer to Iquitos and they could be overfished as well. But I think the fish are still pricey, so high price, so not too many people will afford them. And therefore also the Rio Marañón from this drainage where the fish come is really far away of Iquitos. That's like you have to travel for a long time. It's not like accessible like the places from the other pencil fish. So I think that this of even if the distribution area is not that big, I don't think that they could be in troubles in, in the next time because like I said, price is still high and um, therefore it's difficult to get to the place. So I hope not, but everything is possible. So what is the resume with this fish after keeping it for like two months? I also uh, had other fish in the aquarium when I had it in the quarantine aquarium with uh, a neon fish, with some endler and no problem at all. And like I said, the only problem is that they probably will hunt the baby shrimp. But other than that, I think it is a perfect nano fish with a size of like three centimeters, maybe 3.2 centimeters. That's 1.1 inch, 1.2 inch. In my view, a perfect nano fish. I have them in a smaller aquarium right now with 30 liters and just to watch them, to observe them and to learn about them. So if you like the channel, subscribe and um, yeah, I see you in the next video. If you have questions about the fish or in general, just let me know and post under the video or write me. I always read um, the comments and I see you in the next video.